to grow out and that's a seed squash I'm saving right there you can see how big it is from my hand and uh, this is used to mark it so I'll find it later uh, but the seed in here will be F3 and I think this is a superb quality um, yellow straight neck type uh, that came out of the breeding and um, just want to document that the every time I looked at them every time I got them off and I cut them up they didn't have much of a seed cavity at all and you can see here even on this fully mature one there's not a whole lot of seeds and the seed cavity is very shallow it's a plus I'm very thankful that it it has some seeds I sure hope they're mature enough a lot of them don't feel like they are but uh, I hope some of them take and um, germinate so I'm going to clean these out Dry them up and put them up. As I was pulling the seeds out, I noticed there's a lot of flesh in that. You know, and uh, I noticed the texture was still kind of creamy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook that up. Take the hard skin off, cook it up like I would normal summer squash and see what happens. Every summer squash that I pulled off um, this has been setting for since July the 6th, so it is almost a month old, sitting in the house, and looking at this, the texture of this one in comparison is really kind of dry and not very appealing at all no moisture looking not much moisture to it and I just cut it in half so it's not very appealing I would not eat that at all but this one on the other hand may be worth a shot we will see okay first thing I did was I cut Cut them with a knife, and it wasn't too difficult actually. You'd think it'd be a bear, but it wasn't too bad. And then I turned it on its side and cut off the slivers here, you see. Now we'll cut the ring around those. The outside edge, I mean. Okay, all I did was cut it out almost exactly like a cantaloupe just a little bit thicker and those are the pieces and we'll see what we can do with them okay with this I'm going to split it in half I'm gonna cook half similar to the way I would cook pan fried squash I've got a couple shallots out of the garden I'll throw them in there because it's thicker and not watery I'll add a little bit of water after I saute the shallots in butter and we'll see what we get with that after I do that I'll take the remaining and boil them up and create a mash and see how it would uh, how it uh, I'm thinking it will behave kind of like a potato because it's almost the exact consistency of a potato we will see if it tastes good I know it can be cubed and added to soup so that's a third option sauteing shallots smells great okay I caramelized the onions and the butter not the onions the uh, shallots and the butter and then I add a little bit of water because the consistency of this is is uh, less watery than summer squash so I'm gonna do that and cover it and we'll see what that does Okay, here it is simmering with the top on it, and I'm going to take the top off with my wife's fancy crocheted pot holder. These are on sale for $7.99 in our store. 
<laughs> that's a joke. Uh, so that's what it looks like now. And over here, the other half, I am boiling in a small pot, and all I've got in there is a little sea salt. Okay, after boiling, just like potatoes, I strained, put back in a pot here, and a little bit of butter, a little bit of milk, a little bit of salt and pepper, just like you would potatoes, and I'm going to mash them, just like mashed potatoes. That may be a little bit too wet. see the consistency that's too wet but we will give her a taste anyway uh, should have used a little less milk and this is my sample taste test I've got the mashed and the sauteed or pan fried whatever you want to call it so here we go I'll go with the sauteed first Hmm. Tastes like uh, summer squash. Hmm. Not bad at all. Surprised. Hmm. All right. Then we'll try the mash. grits. It tastes more like grits, more or less like grits. A little bit different. Hmm, not bad. 